I get jizz in my belly button. That's disgusting. Yes, 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 yes. Daddy likes, daddy likes, daddy likes, daddy likes. And daddy likes being on the podcast. Hello. No, he doesn't. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> oh, Shabagool, what? Episode 85, 65? No. 59. 60. No. 60. 60. Couldn't it be? Like 57. No. 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 Yeah. No. 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 Or at least 58. Maybe 58. Maybe. Because there's 58. the one I wasn't on. Yes, and it was a terrible experience all Travesty. around. Travesty. Everybody is depressed. <laughs> I'm just the light of the show. Yes, you are. You are a bright, burning little beacon you in the sky, You are a bright Tyler. bulb of light. I don't know why I'm the light of the show. You are our whale you... of happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Get off your phone! I'm checking what episode we're on. Bro, we have, we have we such have a backlog, so though. many backlogged, dude. Okay, tell us which one's the last one we uploaded, and then maybe add 10 to it. <laughs> 51. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> so I think we're on 58. Because 56 was the last one we... last one all three of us did. What we think was. What we think. Anyway, MDCast! <laughs> It's MD cast time. Yeah, yeah. We are. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, fuck, fuck. fuck Stay. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, baby. Cast. Fuck. MD cast, yeah. baby. Fuck. Fucking Saturday. Fuck. Saturday, baby. Fuck. One love. <laughs> One love. <laughs> One love. MD love. Fuck. <laughs> we gonna use your booty. <laughs> we gonna use your podcast. <laughs> Let me lick them mics. No. <laughs> Uh-huh. Okay, God, that's a peak kiss. That's just for the viewers. I see. Well, um, welcome to episode whatever the fuck it is. One day we'll figure it out. Um, not today. <laughs> we just need Eric to edit the episodes and actually upload them to find I out. I mean, the problem is that I need to make the thumbnails. We've probably got some already edited, and I'm just too fucking lazy to do it. I do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, At that point, why not just attempt to make your own? Because that is... That would be stepping over Kyle's boundaries. That's over my jurisdiction. I know my place. Well, I am not an artist. thumbnails are very high in demand, don't you know? I am not an artist, Tyler. I, I don't question. understand how to do it. Oh boy, a question. Eric edits them. Yeah. You do the thumbnail. Yeah. What do I do? You're on them. <laughs> you are our centerpiece. You are like our sun. We orbit around you. <laughs> Is that a fat joke? No. It can be if you want it to be. <laughs> you sure are fucking dense. <laughs> I thought you were about to say, you are sure fucking fat. <laughs> our dear friend Tyler, who we love so much, he's got his own gravity. I'm like Peter Griffin. Uh, Peter. Uh, Peter. Come on the paw again. Yeah. Peter, you're fucking gay. Oh, fuck, oh. Lois, this is worse than the time I was fucking gay. <laughs> <laughs> Baba Booey. Baba Booey. No, we can't say that anymore. That's cancel culture words. God, is we'll it? We'll get Why? canceled for that. Why? Because Trump said it. What? Yeah. Did he? He said Baba Booey. That's funny. You, I don't uh, Baba believe You it. really like that blanket, don't you? No, I just... <laughs> he okay, just doesn't yeah. want to be cold. <laughs> Here, here's the blanket. It's the blanket podcast now. It's <laughs> blanket cast. Here, you get the heavy one. <laughs> <laughs> big blanket for big man. A, why do you have a weighted blanket? Because I'm autistic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could have said something so rude. <laughs> why? Because I'm autistic? No. <laughs> Like the weight of your failure, failures isn't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you're here, Tyler. This is why we need you. See, I don't take stabs at Kyle like that. <laughs> Kyle doesn't take stabs at me like the that. The weight this of is being what... an underachieving. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler, where would we be without you here to bring us down a peg or three? <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, Eric. I love you. <laughs> I love you. You're just a failure. Every joke is laced in truth. <laughs> like a fine drug. You're not a failure. 
I'm worse. I never even tried. <laughs> uh, Man, this bitch heavy. Well, wow. Yeah, it's called a weighted blanket. Weighted. How heavy is a weighted blanket? Wow, well, well, that's pretty heavy. Do you it... feel lonely at night, Eric? <laughs> is that why you have this? No, my parents got it for me for Christmas because... Because they thought you felt lonely. At yeah. Night. They were right, but... <laughs> <laughs> didn't you Didn't you get, like, a heated blanket at some point? Like I don't the, like it. Man's like, got like five blankets, bro. I love blankets, dude. Blankets are so fucking nice. I just nice. need the one. <laughs> I use three in the winter, all of varying thickness. I just use one. I, I, I only use I one have, when it's warm. I have like three blankets, but a lot of the time when I'm going to bed, I will sleep on the on top of the comforter, like the one that is on top, and I will wrap myself in it like a taco mm. and sleep on top of all of the other bedding I have. Because it's just the coolest instead of... I overheat very easily. Yeah, I and, feel that's a, that's a problem I suffer. And, like, the reason that I kind of I wonder why, like, Kyle! You have three blankets! I don't use them in the fucking summer! <laughs> use them in the winter when it's cold. The reason I like the weighted blanket, though, is because it seems to, like, stay cooler longer than all the other blankets I have. Because yeah, like, all of these are kind of wooly. That one's more, like, not. It's it like the beads in them. Dude, the beads. Cold. Yeah, cold beads. Cold beads. It's actually filled with lead. Oh. It's yeah. Great. It's why I'm not. So you're perfect able... if an x ray ever goes over you. Yeah, it's actually also why I'm not able to retain thought because I have lead poisoning. <laughs> I think that requires a little more than just being having a blanket full of lead. I also take some of the beads out and eat it. Okay, that'll do it. It yeah. tastes pretty fucking cool. It tastes like those little beads and like, you know, those milk straws. Milk straw? <laughs> Do you mean boba tea? No, boba it's tea? a, it's a special straw that has like little beads in it that like have like, fl- uh, meant to like flavor your milk. Yes, I have seen those. Do you mean like the Oreo and Fruit Loop straws? It's not actually made of cereal. It's like a genuine straw, but like it's got a thing in it that the milk passes over. Yeah. Oh, those fucking things? I never liked those. They didn't work for me. Because, like, it's... I always just poured syrup in mine. Yeah? Yeah. They actually started selling vanilla fucking Nesquik shit again recently. I really? Thought, yeah, I love the vanilla flavor. Strawberry's, Strawberry's good. Best. Chocolate's kind of a little chalky. Yeah. I mean, chocolate's chocolate. I don't... I, I like chocolate, but there reaches the point where, where it's like, I'm just going to go for a different flavor. Strawberry. Yeah, strawberry is always a good one. Vanilla is peak. No. People often sleep on vanilla. Yes. Like, it's a flavor. Yeah, you need to have your fucking leg in a bear trap to fucking jerk off properly. You need to be tied up and suspended in the air to come. What the fuck? I don't know what that has to do with vanilla, but... (laughs) It has to everything truly, to do with to vanilla. Truly experience the taste of vanilla, you need to go through what he said. <laughs> no, I'm talking about everything, not just flavor. Ah, well. Point being, don't be sleeping on vanilla. But strawberry is the best. Strawberry is good. It's strawberry is really very good. good. I'm just saying. I remember in high school when we'd go and get fucking milk cartons of strawberry yeah, milk. Yeah, strawberry milk. Sure. Drink one every day and then get mad indigestion for the last class of the, of the day. I remember the one time we uh, went to do that, and they they had like the the blood testing thing in front of the uh, lunch room, and as as we're coming back from Walmart, uh, I was like, you know what? I don't know my blood type. I'm gonna go find out. You guys go tell me. So I'm gonna be late. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, the lady, I think I may have told you guys this, but I don't know if I ever said it on the podcast. She poked my finger. Yeah. And blood just came shooting out. <laughs> and the lady started to fucking panic. Like, What's going on? Are you okay? Are you okay? I was like, yeah. Was like, yeah, just, just bleeding, bro. Just bleeding. So she asked you what's going on. She's <laughs> <laughs> like, are you alright? She's like, yeah, just blood. Just blood. 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 blood, man. Blood. 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 We watched Beetlejuice today. A classic movie. I was delighted to watch it again for both nostalgia and a, and newfound appreciations. Did you find any details you didn't notice before? A lot of the simple, a lot of the the basic jokes and quips, a lot of the random shots people took at other people, 
Um, the weight of a young tween aged girl saying she wanted to kill herself. <laughs> I really vibe with that. Like, my perception of it when I was a kid was fairly like, ha ha, funny ghost movie. But you see it as as an adult, and you're like, hey, wait a minute. And you also realize how much Beetlejuice isn't actually in the movie, too. That yeah. Is, like, he's the antagonist. He is. And uh, I also didn't realize, like, when I was a kid, I always, you know, thought, like, ah, Beetlejuice, funny ghost man. He, he spooks people. He gets his kicks. But no, he's like, he straight up says at the beginning, like, hey, you want me to kill some people? They're like, no, we don't want to kill. Like, ah, okay, possession. Uh, and I, I like I didn't catch that when I was a kid because that's that's kind of like fucked up. Yeah. Like you just call him and he'll fucking kill people for you. I always thought he was just the silly ghost shenanigans man. I just love every moment with Beetlejuice was a good one. Like not a single he, scene that he was in was a miss. Well, and that's the thing, right? I'm actually very glad that he's not in it as much because of how he acts. He acts very like abrasive and very he's very quick fire. He's always doing something, and he's always doing it very quick. So if he was in more of the movie, it would have been too much. Yeah. You know, you would have grown tired of him over the course of an entire movie because he's because that kind of quick fire thing doesn't really work long form. But because he was kind of more sparse in it, uh, he was able to be just this fast-paced, abrasive creature, and it worked. I just love the one part where he grabs his going groin and just goes, oh, oh. <laughs> Nice fucking models! Honk, honk. That's that a was, that was good funny. fucking scene. And I just like a lot of the things in the movie. You know, mm-hmm. stop motion animation, all of, the, uh, all of the effects and stuff. It... it I think it still looked pretty good. Oh, yeah. You, set, you could... des- set design is pretty peak, man. Yeah. No, it's it's kind of like it's got an atmosphere. Dark because... and depressing though, because that girl was like writing her suicide letter. Yeah, she was <laughs> writing a suicide note, and that's that's fucked up. And I never caught on to that as a kid. But it's also it's also just it's it's wholesome when you reach the end of it. Like I don't know about they you, just but I chill find together. Like she had like a whole one eighty as well. She wasn't that like that dark goth. Oh, I'm all alone. She actually became like a normal child. She became happy, and I think it's 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 an it's an amusing show of things because you know at the beginning the couple they're hap they're there's this happy couple, but they don't have a full family, and it's like clear from things that happened like they wanted to have a family, they wanted to have a child and all that, but they couldn't or they were having trouble with it. And then, of course, they die. Everything goes fucking hectic. And then at the end, they've got this kind of extended family thing. And everyone's kind of happy. And it becomes wholesome again. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess I'm just a sucker for that kind of wholesome family dynamic stuff. But I think it was a, I think it was a, a very nice a very nice ending. It's very it, feel-good. It does take a very different turn from where you think it would be. Yeah. Like, yeah. most of the time, you'd think that they would just run out and scream and leave. But, like... You can tell that they're all kind of The father happy. was just really invested in buying that town. <laughs> but you know what? Fuck that dog. Dog a bitch. Yeah, you that. know what? Kind of happy the dog did it now. I'm not. I feel like they got a better conclusion than if they just continued living the way they did. Perhaps. And maybe that's just my kind of different outlook of like, they still were happy in the end. How are we yeah, to know that they like, they might dead. not have been happy continuing the way they were? They did get a half daughter out of it, yeah, which is something that they couldn't get if they were alive, unless they adopted. But we're not going to get into semantics because it still, didn't happen. Fuck that yeah. dog. That's he knew dog. exactly what he was doing. Dog fucking is not allowed on this podcast. And there, it's 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 also you know worth noting that it was a movie with a lot of a lot of fun little details to it. Um, you know the fact that the uh, that their their fucking agent or whatever the who had her sl- her throat slit every time she smoked the smoke would come out of her uh, the hole in her neck. It's a real cutthroat business. Yeah, real cutthroat. <laughs> but. Um, I thought that details like that were always fun. I always also liked seeing the different people who are, who who whose deaths are reflect or their ghosts are reflective of their deaths. 
Mm-hmm. Like it was just funny because like the one guy cracked a joke like, "Oh, if you kill yourself, you become this in the afterlife." And we, <laughs> and we find out servant. the fucking receptionist was oh, fucking killed herself. <laughs> yeah. And, and fucking... like everybody there that did die, they are all civil servants. Except for that, actually, no, maybe the flag guy did step in front of a truck or something. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. That that was also a pretty good joke. Like, uh, Feeling like, a little flat today. <laughs> <laughs> How do I look? We don't have any mirrors in here. It's like, oh, you, you look fine. Thanks, I was feeling a little flat today. He just goes, ha, 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 just flies off. Just this float goes through the fucking thin hole in the wall that was made for him. <laughs> then there's just the hangman, like, delivering the papers, just swinging on about. Yeah, he he does a full 360 and drops the paper where he needs to. I, I always, I always like that. I always like seeing the little reflections of how they died. Which begs the question, the main couple fell into a fucking, like, river and theoretically would have drowned you'd think they would be blue yeah you'd think they would be blue you'd think they might be like bloated probably just to might... make them more human yeah because yeah. you know protagonists and they're supposed to be like they're supposed to become this family for for lydia and all that because like they were wet when they came when they back. got there but then they dried off yeah um but you know everyone else say you know i get why they did it but you'd think it wouldn't happen but it's also just really fun to see all the different people, just how they live with these weird reflections of how they died. It's fun stuff. It's fun mm-hmm. stuff. And that, that's that's my ultimate thing about the movie. It's a fun movie. I I like the effects. I think it I think it all looks pretty good. I think it sounds good. I like the main theme of the of the movie. Main theme going is. <laughs> That was weak, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was just pure air. <laughs> Does not live up. But yeah, I had was... some good ones last episode. Uh, yeah, a number. <laughs> he was going rapid fire at one point. <laughs> oh, proud. Thanks, man. I'm go- oh, yeah, that's just, yeah. <laughs> I'm proud I started something. <laughs> yeah, you started something. Yeah, wild. you farted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's your contribution. <laughs> I guess you could say when you pass the gas, you pass the torch. No. I don't like the way you said that. Why not? It just sounds dumb. It is dumb. <laughs> I'm talking about farts. <laughs> but Tyler, what did you think about the movie? Cause yeah, it was your first time it. seeing it. Yeah, I've, I've never truly seen the movie in its entirety. It was a pretty good movie, even like nowadays... I think it still holds up. It was made in, like, what, 1988? Yeah. Yeah. A year before the first Tim Burton Batman. Yeah. Whereas the Batman was played by Beetlejuice. Yeah. uh, And now I kind of want to see if he would be a good Joker. The Joker? No. What we do need, we need to watch the, uh, like, more Tim Burton movies, though. We do. Corpse Bride. Yeah. Corpse Bride. We watched Caroline. Was that Tim Burton? Coraline. That's I, what I'm saying. I can't remember. Was that Tim Burton or not? I'm not sure. And I think it would be because like the, like he's a fan of that. I mean, yeah, the hat fits. Um, uh, Corpse Bride, Nightmare Before uh, Christmas. Um, did he do Frankenweenie? He did do Frankenweenie. Because like, there's the whole theory yeah. that Frankenweenie is the same guy, same dog. As uh, Corpse Bride. Oh, yeah. Then Corpse I've Bride. Never, I, and, and that's the thing. That's another reason I want to see the other Tim Burton movies. I've never seen Corpse Bride or Nightmare Before Christmas. Really? Yeah, I've never seen them. Coraline is not. Not Tim, oh, not Tim Burton. Coraline Jones. Coraline. I love that movie Coraline. so much, though. It was a trip because I was high. Yeah. I... <laughs> I remember when I was just a boy and I was on a camping trip and the family that we were staying with at the time at their trailer, they had a little DVD player and me me and my childhood friends would just watch that movie like five times a day. That was such a good ass movie. Yeah. I really do like Claymation. It's an interesting art form. It, it ha, like I We feel- have to watch nine too. Nine was a really good one. I really want to watch Nine. I've never actually fully watched it. I actually watched it for the first time, like, maybe a year ago, maybe a number of months ago. Mm-hmm. Um, 
real, real good fucking movie. Like, mm-hmm. the kind of, the, the visuals in it are fucking great. I didn't like it as much as a, as, um, as a kid. Mainly because, one, it scared me yeah, a it's lot. Yeah, really, it's apparently, like, for a kid's movie, it's really fucking scary. It's, it's scared, fucking terrifying. It dude. scared me more than Coraline. And I feel like Coraline would have been more scary for a lot of other people. Oh, like... But that one really bugged me, just because of the monsters. But, like, if I were to go back and look at it now, which, like, I guess a couple of years ago, I did watch bits and pieces of it again. And I loved it. I loved all of the, like, scary shit in it. Because it was so interesting to see now. It's a movie I'm not sure I would have appreciated as much as a kid, but I definitely appreciate it now. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, definitely throw that shit on the list because that's a that's a good one. Mm-hmm. No, I'd, would you fuck sack boy? No. Can you what, put on a wig first? What about sack girl? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Still the same size though. How big is sack boy? Canonically, small. Because sack boy exists in like. Little arts and crafts world. They're real world object counterparts, I think. Such as I don't know, probably like a fucking wrench or something. Have you seen that? Um, have you seen that one game? It reminds me of Little Big Planet, where it's like the <laughs> huh? eight centimeters tall. <laughs> Woo! Woo! I don't think you can fuck him. I, can. I mean, he could go in you. <laughs> Ugh. Sorry. <laughs> So what's this other game? Um, what's the one where it's like the like married couple that are going through a divorce and they get turned into toys? It takes two. Yeah, it takes two. That one looks really fun. It's it seems like a way better game than it has any fucking right to be. Mm-hmm. Like I just it looks don't so get... visually stunning too. Because I think it's made by the people who who uh, I could be wrong here, but did like unravel. Maybe. If you remember that game. I do, actually. Because I remember that game. When that game was announced, the dude just, like, comes out on stage and he's got a little physical thing of the main character. He's like, this is my game, Unravel. It's about a little, a little wool dude. Did you guys ever play Journey? I never played Journey myself. I played, like, a demo of it. Um, I would like to play Journey, but I don't know where I can. The problem... The, the thing about Journey is that it's one of those games that's kind of, that's an experience and I it's f- not fun <laughs> kind of I, the okay. m- more more of the point for me is that it's it's supposed to be just a thing you glide through as you go through this little little journey and then you look back on it all and like the journey was more important than destination and all that and that it, it's all well and good but I don't want to spend my time playing it. Mm. Especially because I know that that's kind of what it is. It just reminds me of, like, a, the Unfinished Swan. It's like an indie game where you basically go through, like, a half-painted, half-black-and-white kind of world. And your goal is to make it to the end because you're apparently meant to finish the drawing or painting the swan. Oh. So it's just your adventure going through it. But you yeah. know what game I really want to play, but, like... Probably will never see a remake or a remaster. Well, uh, the Tarkov, not Tar, no, not Tarkov. Tarok. Oh, Tarok. Tarok game for the PS3. The one no one like. The one where they rebooted it and he was a space marine. Yeah, man, I love that shit, bro. I love that shit. I liked that game, but I like, I I played that game. I didn't have any background on what fucking Tarok was. So I didn't like know that it was like, like a reboot. It's such an interesting concept. It's like mo- like sci-fi futuristic meat dinosaurs. I liked it because it was this. Um, I liked it because m- less for the aspect of dinosaurs, more for the aspect of like a a future kind of thing crashed on a planet with just fucked big monster shit. Like, cause correct me if I'm wrong. That's the game where you have a boss fight where you're in a cave and this giant fucking sea monster is in the cave, right? I think so. Yeah. I always remember that boss fight because I'm like, this ain't dinosaurs, but it's fucking cool. It was so cool because like, like, one of your primary weapons was a bow in that game. Yeah. And if you like charged it all the way back and shot at a person and if there's a wall behind them... You'd pin them th- to it? They, yeah, you pin them to That's that wall. That's always a fun mechanic. I love that. 
that was good in um, the Alien vs. Predator uh, Predator story with the uh, the throwing spear when you got it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, you know what game Another I want? Game. What? The King Kong game on PS2. I still have that. Man, I'm going to come over and play it. That was... Just that was also a way better game than it had any right to be. We need like, to start a fucking, like, uh, let's play. What game? So and many. All of we have so many games about. we want to fucking play and talk about, like, The Warriors, Lisa the Painful. Um, I still want you to play Lisa. I would really like to. It does look like a very interesting game. Yeah, it... It's a it's a very memorable experience in pretty much every way. Man, I want you both to play The Walking Dead Survival Instinct. I have played it. I don't fucking like it. You're gonna <laughs> fucking play it, Eric. It's bad. You're gonna it's, play it. It's bad, I Tyler. Don't care. It's fucking bad. I love it's it. It's garbage, dude. I love it. I fucking man, I want you to play State of Decay. Just play so much better of a survival zombie game. It's just so much better. I Just in every way. Walking Dead Survival Instinct. <laughs> Walking Dead Survival Okay, we'll play it for one episode. You'll be like, yeah, this is kind of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> we will awaken you. Yeah. We'll make you realize. Fuck Walking Dead Survival Instinct. <laughs> I fucking love the game, man. Why? What do you love about it? I just I just love the the gameplay like the guns the what different type of weapons the the variety of different locations you can go to like all six of them there's more than six <laughs> the different vehicles you can get the collectibles they were funny carbanti bear that's racist <laughs> the interesting characters you got to meet that are actually like somewhat tied into the actual story of The Walking Dead. Oh, well, I'd be a little lost on that anyway. I haven't fucking kept up with The Walking Dead for a long time. Like, no you know one the, has. You know in the first season, like, uh, Andrea and her little sister? Yeah. You get to meet their parents. Ooh, damn. The ones that die? They don't die. Spoiler for Walking actually, Dead. They actually, they do. They do. <laughs> oh, shit, spoilers! If I, if I can spoil the ending, I can spoil If you can spoil died. The Walking Dead. Because, <laughs> like, uh... In the ending of the game, you gotta get to, like, a, a stadium, which is, like, the army's held up in. Like, oh, helicopters come in and out, pick up survivors. Yeah. And, like, y- you can choose what survivors come with you throughout the whole story. Obviously, I had kept the, the dad and the mom and some someone else. And they go onto the helicopter, and you go to go you with them. didn't create a harem of bitches to fuck as Daryl Dixon? No. Bitch. Daryl Dick down? Daryl Dick down, mating, pressing the helicopter. But like, as you go to get onto the helicopter to go with them, your brother stops you. Merle? Because he's like, oh, how, how you, you so fucking dumb? How you not see the, the, the pilot has a blade on him? And yeah, you just go on your own adventure. Oh. Funny. How did he notice the bite on him? I don't know. <laughs> it was the bite of 86. He pulled down his pants and looked at his ass cheek before he penetrated and said he has a bite mark on his ass. From me, and then a zombie. Yeah, I like games that do that kind of stuff. What if your favorite video game just got, like, quantum distortioned and just became, like, Among Us? <laughs> hey, Kyle. <laughs> hey, Kyle. Shut the fuck up. Why would up? that happen? <laughs> I like quantum distortion. Like, imagine you're, you're thinking fondly on your favorite game, The Warriors... And then just uh, quantum distortion happens. I was like, oh, the Warriors. Yeah, that game where there's like red sus and he beats up people. Like, that's, that's the game you're talking about, right? I think that that would drive me to be a, um, a social worker. <laughs> <laughs> of all things, a social worker. Yeah. Is the movie line. When you kill yourself, you become a social worker. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Do you think this rope could hold my weight? (laughs) Relax, Eric, Where'd you go? No, no, you put the thought in my head. What if Warriors was gay? (laughs) (laughs) I don't think that's what he said, but okay. (laughs) Sorry, I've had a bit too much to drink. I've been drinking since 12. I'll have you know. 
Uh, it is currently almost ten. Twelve in the morning. I know. I'm I saying think you mean 12 it's in been the ten afternoon. hours. Yeah. Not twelve in the morning. Cut me some slack. <laughs> fucking we'll fucking idiot. cut you, all right? Hey, I have the knife. <laughs> I'll do it myself. <laughs> hey. I'll join you. <laughs> hey, I have a pair of scissors. Um, hold on. There we go. Scissor you just ASMR. cut his balls off. Yeah, snip snap. Kyle actually castrated my dog for me. Yeah. He actually did you, it very well. You gotta well. remember to neuter. Mm-hmm. He actually put the scissors inside and then cut up the stuff. Man, I'm gonna stop. These are very satisfying scissors, by the way. They How do you work. work at your workplace without killing someone? I, I swear to God. Man, <laughs> you should work with the, with the people I work with because then you would be even more baffled. <laughs> <laughs> Like I feel, I feel like committing various heinous sins. Right? I should bring home my actual pair of scissors that I work with because they are way better. <laughs> I got a question. Those yeah. don't cut. How did your whole family? How did you end up the normal one? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Tyler, that could mean so many things. That's and so I'm... terrible. Tell Tyler. me what you mean, so as, I can gauge a, how as a member I of the be. as a member of the LGBTQ community yourself. <laughs> how could you ask such a terrible question? Like your brother, gay. <laughs> your mom, blind. Your other mom is your mom. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just you. I'm depressed. What's your point? <laughs> but how are you the most normal? <laughs> I don't know. One in four doctors agree that I'm normal. I don't know. You had the good toothpaste. Yeah. <laughs> I just had that thought. Do you remember that commercial where it's like one in four doctors agree that this toothpaste is the best? It's and usually one in ten. Yeah. I've said no. one in four because I'm a family of four. Yeah. It's nine out of ten you just say it's good. It's that one that doesn't. Yeah, you're right. The one that doesn't says that it's bad and it's because he got his nuts bit off by a squirrel. Yeah. That's a commercial. <laughs> no, it's not. Yes, it is. I have something to show you after this episode. <laughs> <laughs> it is a commercial. It's like, we don't know why the other one didn't agree with the rest of them. Because his nut got fucking bit off by a fucking squirrel? Yes. Well, the squirrel has the squirrel affect the toothpaste. Because, like, everyone's like, yes, we agree, yes, we agree, and then the squirrel goes up and bites his dick, and he's like, oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> it's a real commercial! And then it raises the question, like, why would he yell no after he got his nut bit off? Why wouldn't he just be screaming? But it's like... Okay, I mean, it made to me be laugh. fair, I would yell various words if my nuts were bitten by a squirrel. So, I mean, you probably temper yourself to these things. Could you comprise a list? I would like to know what people would say other than no. Uh, fuck, shit, goddamn, nit! <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna make that joke. <laughs> squirrel, ball, testicle, ah. <laughs> I... <laughs> I'd probably just devolve into Boomhauer real quick. I feel like a lot of people let's let's take a um let's take a here's another public survey I'd like to do. It's like what do you think you would say if you got your nuts hit and people would be like <laughs> ah ow ow scream and then we actually hit them and see how correct they would be. <laughs> we have to make sure to pay them. <laughs> no. <laughs> After. After yeah. And then just run away while they reel. How many people do you think would say nothing? They'd be like, oh, oh, oh. Me. I think that's still a, that classifies as sound. But they'd have to say that they made the sound. We have to get confirmation of what they would say. If they think they would say it or not. This is all about... This is one of those things where it's like, Oh yeah, I would stop 9-11 if I was on the plane. And then they put them on 9-11 and then they don't. <laughs> They just redo 9-11? Yeah, they redo 9-11 and they put Marky Mark on 9-11. They put him on the plane that's going to crash into the tower. Hey, yo, if my kids were on that plane, I would stop 9-11. <laughs> Marky Mark, you're cool, but you really are the whole funky bunch. <laughs> <laughs> you really are a funky bunch. 
How would you stop 9-11, Tyler? I'd probably pull my bat wing over the plane and stop the engine. <laughs> Tyler, I'm scared of what you're about to say. I would have... <laughs> <laughs> Is it out of choice or out of Imagine what the world inability. would be like without it. I mean, it would be easier to get through an airport. So I'm pretty sure that's where the dial 911 comes from, isn't it? No. <laughs> no. No? Why? Why would it come from that? I don't know. It didn't come from that. Nine... I figured there was some reason they, behind people it. People dialed 911 before 911 happened. So that's just convenient, or I guess. I mean, nine the nine one one number is also is different uh, across various places. That's what I'm thinking. Like, in, like the, what's the reasoning behind in Canada and the Americas? Well, in why America, is it nine one one? It's probably it's probably because it's both it's it's short and easy to type in. But it's also separate enough that you're not going to accidentally do it. Because 9 and 1 are the exact opposites of, like, a number pad. And you need to double enter the 1. So it's not so it, it's less likely that you're just going to randomly, uh, accidentally dial the fucking cops. Yeah, because, like, isn't it, like... The in, cops! In, in, like, fucking England, it's, like, zero zero one uh, or some shit. It's actually it, 007. No, it's not. I think... I don't know what it is in other places. I think like one one nine somewhere. And then there's one place I think it's like nine nine nine. Yeah. I don't know. I don't live in these it's other 999 places. It's nine 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 in Germany. Is it? Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> End yourself. That took me a second because I was going nine nine nine. <laughs> it took you a second to get the joke because you were playing out the joke. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. God damn. Nine nine nine. But I, I actually genuinely thought it was 911 because it was after 911. Nah. Because like, that was like the response number. Why would it be the response number? Why would everybody type Like in, in a state of emergency, call this number if you need any help or something. Because no. like New York was fucked. <laughs> no, it was 911 was that before it was 911. It was just a coincidence. Coinky dink. Yerp. Nine one one was an accident. No. Yeah. It was an inside job. Who who perpetrated the idea? Stephen Bill. It was actually Tupac Shakur. Who the fuck is Stephen Bill? I don't know. <laughs> it's like Sneed and Feed. Formerly Stephen Bill. <laughs> yeah. Steve then Bills. Steve <coughs> controls. Sensible, secure, sucking, whereas Bill <laughs> is in control of Big Buck Dick Bill Suck. <laughs> I'm already tired of this joke. <laughs> it's not even a joke, I'm just trying to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Live update of... It works. That I'm not even going to say anything... My lava Is lamp it moving works. For you, Kyle? We've been it talking about fucking moving. lava lamps See? for so long. Even he just said something. I'm gonna hurt you both. <laughs> <laughs> you already. You see do. how oblong that shape is? It's not moving. Though. Right up to poo poo. Eric, no, I'm talking about know, the lamp itself. Do you know how many terrible substances I consume under your guidance and, and under your roof? <laughs> you hurt me enough. <laughs> you see. That's where you're wrong, Kyle. <laughs> I offer, and you accept. Yes, but it's so much easier to blame other people for my indulgences. And that makes you human. Yeah, so just accept it. Hey, Tyler, what's your And we about? haven't also just done it under the roof. Bring. You're right. Run We've by been outside, <laughs> and... We did it in a field. Yeah. A couple fields. Did it behind the shack? Yeah. Yeah, did it uh, near McDonald's. But we've never done it in the McDonald's because we are civilized. Civilized people. We are merely rats in McDonald's. Tell you what, next episode we'll be sober. Actually, no, this one we are sober. We're sober this podcast, everyone. No, this is completely unfiltered. We are not 
running through any drugs or I'm alcohol filtered. or anything. I'm this episode. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is for that one guy that commented that he found us through the, his fucking therapist. No, his AA coordinator. So this one's for you because <laughs> I, I was like, real. if I find this this is so. this next story is for this guy. Uh, you commented that you found it through you found this the the show through your AA meeting. I think Eric coordinator because he's been to AA. <laughs> no. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, and I was like, this has to be a bot, because why would anybody's AA instructor direct them towards a show that we have not been sober for, for, like, ever? <laughs> I feel like we are bad role models, for one, and two, who's found us? Who's watching? <laughs> but anyway... This episode's for you. We are completely sober. Keep on your 13-step program because you are doing something that we just simply can't. (laughs) You're better than us. It wasn't a high bar to hit, but by God, you hit it. I could quit this at any point. I'm addicted to drinking brake fluid. I have a problem. (laughs) I was about to say, that's not real. But then I was just thinking that that's the light fluid. What? Or blinker what? fluid. Blinker fluid. Yeah. I remember that meme. The blinker fluid one? Like, someone would send, like, the kid into, like, the Oh, yeah. Shop. I remember oh, I need, ones I like need that. the blinker fluid, and they're like, It's not fucking real! <laughs> Stop <laughs> asking! That's the best one. Those are the best things that you can do to keep journeymen busy. Go inside and find the steam bucket. There's no such thing as a steam bucket. Uh Or the sky hook, or the flux capacitor, or the wood stretcher. The wood stretcher was my favorite. (laughs) (laughs) A magical time. Or you get the video of the guy that is just holding the bucket, and it's like... You gotta get the uh, the spark bucket, and it's like hold the uh, hold the bucket behind me while I'm grinding this, and then it'll catch all the sparks. And he's like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just nothing. <laughs> it's just something to keep people busy. You gotta find the sky hook. What's the sky hook? Oh, it's just a hook that's in the sky. We use it to lift things. We call those cranes. Wow. No one knows how they're built. How do you guys think you would die if you were in the Beetlejuice realm? A.K.A. real life. How do you think you would die in real life? Like a loser. (laughs) Don't say that. (laughs) How would a loser die? What's a loser's death? What's a winner's death? Heart attack. How do winners die? Heart attack. Is it all depending on the situation? How you got the heart attack. (laughs) So if you got scared by something... Too my Big Mac. If you got scared, Too many big if you got scared, hey, that's by the winner's way out. <laughs> if you yeah, got, uh, want a big man. <laughs> if you got scared by something, you're a loser. You know what would be neat? What? You die by getting fucking hit by a truck, and then your like ghost body is just like this mangled Spider Man. So like the guy we saw, the no, he got man. flattened. I'm talking like your limbs are bent every which way and you just crawl around like a fucking horrible creature. You just come into the fucking office and you're just like a full swats. <laughs> just, just so inconvenient. Like just the one in a million chance that you get flattened into the form of a swastika and everything's like, uh, puh, puh. And it's like, I didn't choose this. <laughs> you think I chose to die in this form? <laughs> Or what if you got what if you melted and then you just became a goop man? Oh, that would probably be the best if you melted and became a goop man. If you became sentient goop, really depend because like we saw the one guy who was like burnt to a crisp, his bones were still around. Yeah, Yeah. but he died in a fire. He was not goop. He didn't melt. Actually, the thing is though, too, like there's skeletons there. There's full on skeletons. Yeah. I don't that think a goop man could exist. Yeah, maybe a goop man is not possible. 
I don't think I want to unlive in a world without goop men. Well, maybe... What about... No, acid people would just go back to uh, goop. Well, it all depends if the acid could actually break down bones because not all acids can. But, like, if something can break down bones, what's the point of, like, you would just become nothing? Because, like, maybe, like, if something can just completely break you down, and like, if a nuke went off, would you just be vaporized? Would you be a vaporized ghost and people are like, even other ghosts can't oh, see you? That must be the worst one. Maybe this, maybe this. Maybe then you're just a shadow. This theoretical thing. Say, like, with Eric's nuke idea. As you're getting hit with the nuke... You become a cockroach. The very second you die, like, say you have, like, half your body left, the very second you die, that's where your body looks there. Okay, okay. Mm. So, like, say you are getting killed by acid, the moment you your heart and your brain stop, that's what your body looks like. Okay, so you become a horrid half-man. Yes. What about people that got their brains blown out? They probably just... Kurt Cobain, you know, nothing. They, they probably just have this, the, the, like, back of their head is just, like, flowering outward and they use it as I mean, buzz. this is all a hypothetical as well because Beetlejuice isn't real. We didn't see any, we didn't see Kurt Cobain in the movie. Well, and, and here's This also, was also before was Kurt Cobain. No, he died in the, uh, he died in, like, 2005 or something. So you can't remember. He died in 2012. He Fuck saw him. he saw the 2012 movie and was like, oh. <laughs> "Here's the question, though, because all we saw all these people are, are dead and fucked up ways. They are life. dead. Yeah, main characters weren't, too. but when they weren't when they, when they when they went to go spook the people, they fucking they they fucked up their faces and shit. Yeah. yeah, can the other people who are fucked up in some way because of how they died? Can they change their body just however they want? Does Burn Man have to stay Burn Man, or can he just, like, bam, pop some shit on his fucking face? Maybe he just hasn't so. tried. No, I don't think he could. Because, like, no matter what, they always went back to, like, their base body. And his base body is no barely no skin. He could probably do some wacky bone stuff. But, but... then why couldn't he just manipulate his body to have skin? What skin? Like, I don't know. He, ha he clearly has no skin on him to begin with, so there's nothing to manipulate. Manipulate your foreskin. Stretch your foreskin over yourself. Which one of you has foreskin again? Kyle, you I have foreskin. Both of us do. Have both of us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm the only monster. Yeah, you're here. outnumbered. Q used to be on your side, but he Yeah, I bet you two can dock or something. <laughs> you guys should dock on a live episode. No. You know what? You know what I think would be. Never! Ever say that after what Eric just said? <laughs> no, we're getting off that. The way shit. you said that is like, you know what? Maybe. <laughs> you know no. what? Maybe I could make myself into a tent. <laughs> Try hard enough. There's a little other way. You think anyway. you could fit like an Ori? How how many things do you think you could fit into your foreskin? I am never going to humor that concept. Like an Oreo? No. Not even like a Cheeto? No. How many little God, crumbs? No. Especially like it's not like it's going Cheetos. inside oh. you. It's like it's going... <laughs> get, get a different kind of cheese go. <laughs> it's like it's going in your kangaroo pelch. That's not how that works. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Please. So, Do you clean like, yourselves? Do you have smegma? Have you ever experienced smegma? It's called take a shower, Dumbo. <laughs> um, I don't have foreskin. I don't know. <sighs> well... Hygiene is important for all you young men out there. Cleanliness is next to clean. godliness. Make sure you peel your foreskin back at least five times a day. Yeah. In front of the family. Yeah. Make you know, sure always you ask for a second stop. opinion. Stop. You know? Yes. Stop. Go on with what you were going to say. What is a funny move? Or what is a... a I, I said funny out of like sheer knee-jerk instinct, but it doesn't have to be funny. What's a movie prop or or something that you think would be neat to own? Because I was just thinking like it would be neat to own the headpiece that um that like that the the the, the woman from Beetlejuice wore when she fucking opened her mouth and had her eyes and shit out. Like the tongue eye thing. Yeah, like it would be neat to own that big old headpiece. Hmm. So that's a long list. 
Because there's a lot of cool things, right? There is. Like, you could go for a simple thing like, this is the sweater from Friday the 13th, you know? Or this is Mrs. Voorhees' uh, rotting head. Uh, But then there's, like, also, there's wacky shit like the fucking phone booth from Bill and Ted that someone already owns. Well, I guess I can't own that then. I feel like I would like the house from. You can't own a whole house. Well, it's a set piece. I mean, you can own a house. <laughs> There's nothing stopping you. You can't you. own a house. <laughs> but like, it's all... You can't own a whole set. Why not? He well, said prop. Prop? prop. I, and I, main, I do mainly mean like props, but, you know, theoretically, feasibly, because um, the, the sets they make, they will sometimes straight up build like cabins or homes. Like... Um, I, I'm pretty sure in some. Well, like, I still Friday wouldn't consider that a prop. I, I suppose it depends on how on how hard you're being on it, but yeah, I mean technically it could be a thing you own if you really wanted to live out there. I always really liked the gun from Alien. The pulse rifle. Yeah. It was a yeah. That's a real good gun. I'll take I'll take that as a prop. Um. Yeah, I've watched like so many movies. Put my tank down. No. You're opening and closing, and it's creating noise. I didn't even turn my hat backwards, damn it. Unprofessional. It would be neat to own the alien skull from that. That was just an Easter egg in Predator. Yeah. I feel like I would like a lot more things if I had, like, just everything just thrown in front of me. Because, like, even it, it could just boil down to the most minute things of, like, I like the shotgun from... Uh, Terminator 2, like the lever action one. The one that fucking that Arnold broke his wrist with? Yes. That exact one. Not a bad one. And like, whew, so many like gun ones that I would like. Well, okay, let's let's make categories. Uh, first category, so we can like generalize it. Vehicles. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say clothes. Oh. Because vehicles will be one of them. Oh, but if clothes. we're like if we're looping in clothes, that's a whole different ball. Because those are props. Yeah, yeah. If we're looping in clothes I didn't even think about clothes. You see, Tyler, this is why it is so much better when you are here and you are compared okay. to when yeah. you are not here. Clothes, go. Clothes. Whew. This could include masks, gloves, shoes. I'd have to say Neo's trench coat because I wor- I rewatched The Matrix recently. Not a bad one. Yeah. Or Van Helsing's trench coat. I love I love his hat. Just mm. fucking the Van Helsing get up. It's pretty fucking choice. Um like I think a good one, like Terminator's leather jacket, or because I mean we just watch it, Beetlejuice's striped suit. That was yeah. pretty cool. Pretty I ball. I always did like that uh, that iconic striped suit, despite the fact that he only wore it once in the whole fucking movie. Yeah, I still it still it stuck around in. in well, it was at the films. climax of it too. Yeah, it yeah. was like showtime, showtime, showtime. But yeah, I think that's a I think that's a good piece of clothing that I would like to own. I would like the um, either Dumbledore's clothes. Or Gandalf the White's clothes, or Gandalf Ooh, the Grey. The fucking, I would go with Gandalf the Grey because then you have the hat. Yeah, he, he didn't have the hat when he was Gandalf the White. No, I think I'd just be a whole fucking vibe, just a hermit vibe. Okay, what's the next category then, Tyler? Since you got the ball rolling on this one, sword, sword, sword. Ooh. Instead of going overall weapons, let's. I'm going to go through specific weapons. So sword. Swords. And sword is the broad term, like any kind of sword. Or any kind of, like, blade or something? No, because that's different. Ah. Uh, that's different. It's different. It has to be a sword. Yeah, different. Anymore. Fucking... Do knives count? That's gonna be a different category. Okay. Because um, I can think of a few sick knives. Because I think the... Ob- I think one of the obvious ones, especially since you just mentioned Lord of the Rings, would be... Fucking Aragorn's sword. Aragorn's, like, king sword? Yeah, the king sword. I really um, I like... fucking love that sword, man. It is a good sword. I really like the Abyss Watcher's sword. But that's not for a movie. 
Yeah. Which has to be from a movie. Well, because we're talking about like actual props oh, yeah, okay. to own. Hmm. Um. God, how many? Did they use a sword in Underworld? They did, but it was in like the third one. Well, yeah, because that one was a prequel one that was like way yeah. back then. Ultraviolet. You remember that movie? Ultraviolet. No. Basically, it's, it has this. It, the main person is the same one from the Resident Evil movies. Mila, De, Mila Jovovich. Yeah. And she just has this, like, cool sword. It's, it, do you know the swords from Attack on Titan? Yeah. Basically like that, but it's in, like an actual, like, straightened sword. So it's, it's kind of like, like a, it's kind of like a fork blade. Yeah. It's okay. like, it actually, like, has, it has, it's like basically a rectangle, but, like, top of it chipped off a little bit. Mm-hmm. That looked baller. That or Blade's Katana from the Blade movie. Classic, classic. I would probably go uh, one of the Hattori Hanzo steel katanas from Kill Bill. I was thinking that as well because there were some pretty sick ones there. I figured you would have gone with like the the Predator's like little fucking. That's blade. not a sword. Yeah, I figured that. I thought he actually of... had one that like shot out and it was actually long as a sword. No, he uses wrist blades. He uses a uh, a spear, um, and a lot of those ones too. They do come from the second. There is a different kind of predator that I do have a uh, I do have a figure of it where it's the um, they call it the Borg, and it's like a more technologically advanced one that has a um, it does have a short sword, and I'm pretty sure it's a nod to like uh, Star Trek's the Borg. I mean, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. All right, next one. Knives. Knives. Fucking any, like, movie sacrificial dagger. I really like the machete from Predator. Is the machete a knife? Yes. It depends on it how you is. look at it. Uh, it's, it's not a sword. <laughs> it's so. not no sword. Alright, machete from Predator. Uh, what would be mine? What, what was a good knife example? There are... A decent few knives in movies that are really stand that really stand out, and even the I was even thinking the um the short sword from uh from Lord of the Rings, but that's still a sword. That's not a knife. The elven swords, the one that glows in the dark. Yeah, the sting. When, swords. Yeah, sting when um uh, I was when actually goblins and shit are around, with, but with that's the, still a sword. With the sword one, I was actually thinking of the elven swords. Because I actually own some. Oh, nice. Yeah, I got a I got a pair of Elven swords. Um, I was ha- trying to think of all the fucking knives. Um, does the, like does the fucking wrist or, or like wrist blade knives from uh, that the dude in Hellboy used count? Ooh, I think those are more swords. Think those are more swords. I think those they are technically swords. more swords. They aren't quite knives. Okay, because, like, the the range of them was about like that. I don't really think they're swords or knives, though. They're, like, they're, their they're own kind of breed of weapon. They're kind of this unique element, because yeah. they're these wrist-mounted blades. Yeah. I'd have to say, like, uh... Those ones are fucking dope, though. We gotta watch the Hellboy movies. Mm-hmm. Like a Rambo knife. Like your Classic typical, Rambo. like, K-bar, but has, like, the... Like the wood cutting things, like you know, like the little squares, the serrations. Like, yeah, to cut yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. All right. Or you know, to catch shit while you're pulling it out. Your violence. Since we've talked about this already, wrist blades. Hellboy. Hellboy. <laughs> I I always forget what his name is, but. Hellboy. No, the dude who used the wrist blades. Just some Nazi. I can't remember either, but yeah, he was a Nazi. Yeah. I really did like his design. I liked his idea, because, like, he was a human who was immortal, but if he ever, like, he wasn't truly immortal, he was stuck in that suit, and every single time he opened it, his body and bones was just dust. That is another comic series that I would like to read, too. I would really like to read the Hellboy series. But, like, that's the thing that I don't like about comics as well. There's so many different reiterations or retellings or everything. It's like, okay, where do you want to start? Whereas, like, manga is a, mo- a lot more convenient where it's like, start on first one. Just keep going. Doesn't stop. Still going. 
Man. It's not jumping between, like, different writers and stuff like that. Uh, I feel Rust Blades is a very limited, uh... Assassin's Creed called it. Yeah. I, I feel it's a very limited, uh, category to have here. Alright. I, I would choose the Assassin's Creed Blade, though. Did they ever make an Assassin's Creed movie that used them? They did. They did. It was... It had Roderick it from... It had Roderick from uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid in it. Ah. Uh, next one. Pistols. Pistols. Hellboy's Pistol is a good one. Ow. Hmm? <laughs> that was just a different machine in its own right. <laughs> it was a powerful thing. It was a magnum. <laughs> I really like uh, Dread's Pistol. Ooh, yeah. That one's a unique one. Uh, the gun from Blade Runner. Ah, yes. I don't know which one you're talking about. Uh, in Blade Runner, Deckard had a unique, uh, unique handgun that uh, that he used when he shot at people. You know, as you do with guns. Is Bl- Blade Runner isn't on the list? The list is it? Probably which not. one? Uh, I'd say we should probably watch both. Have you ever read the book? No. No. I would, I I've read. seen... I would like to get around to it. I've seen, like, people talk about it and the differences between it and the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've never read it myself. And I I was kind of... I haven't dedicated myself to reading through the Annihilation um, novel yet. But uh, I'm just kind of, like, looking at reviews and everything. It's very different. Where it's, it's the... It's ultimately the same idea, but... It's not as personable, whereas the movie, it has, um, like, you get everybody's names and everything and why they're there, but with the book, it's almost like it is a dissection of Mm -hmm. where they are. You don't get any names other than that the main character is referred to as Songbird in a few times, but other than that, it's all very cut and dry, like it is an actual science experiment happening, and it's, it's neat that way. It's also really short, too, so, like, I, I don't know if I'm going to read that and then another Warhammer book or another one, another Warhammer book before that. Only time will tell. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'll... It's a whole series, too. There's, like, two other books after it. Oh, really? Yeah. So, Tyler, what about you? I'm just trying to think of, like, cool pistols. There's a lot of good ones, and I try to think of ones that are un- more unique, because, like, I think it would be, like... The, the fucking guns from the end of Django, you know, I like those ones, but that's because... They're, they're also they're, real. Yeah, those are just real guns. Um, yeah, and I mean, there's there's a there's a number of cool, cool old handguns. If we were going all media, I would say the, um, the cutter from uh, Dead Space. I really do like that that's one. That's a classic. If we're going all media, I'd either want... Alucard's guns. Oh, the fucking his the Casul and the, the other his one. or Dante's ebony and ivory. Yeah, they're basically the same thing, except Alucard's are bigger <laughs> and cooler by extension. <laughs> Man, uh, shotguns. I already said mine. What was yours? Terminator. Oh, the lever action. Yeah, I fucking love those guns, even if they are, or the um. The one from uh, the first um, Purge movie, where like it had the uh, it had the pump on the top of it, where it was like, it was it was essentially just a normal shotgun, but like to pump it there was a lever on the top that he would pull back, and it was almost like it was more of an LMG kind of style. Ah. It was just a cool design, but ultimately not very functional. I can't think of any parti- any shotguns in particular. Oh, I'm just thinking of, like the double barrel from Evil Dead. Classic boomstick. Yeah. We gotta watch the Evil Dead movies. It They're is on, on the, the list. list. They are on the list. Ooh, what's a good one? Well, here's a here's a category I would propose because I have ideas for it. Um, like monster prosthetics. What's that? Like, anything that's used when making a monster on screen. And I'll give examples here, because I had ideas. The first one I had was when you said Lord of the Rings. Um, uh, 
from Return of the King when Aragorn cuts off the the mouth of Sauron's uh, head. I would want that head. Mm. Or the head that grows legs from the thing. That would be a good one. Like, just monster bits and, like, the maybe the prosthetic someone wears so or bits that were a monster, like from an animatronic or something. I'd really just like the Xenomorph uniform. It would be really cool to have that. On it? The fucking, like, uh, the chestburster. Yeah. Like, just Because... In the first movie, when you see the chestburster and it moves across the table, it's literally just a model or something that they pull across the table. So I think that would be neat. I'm trying to think think of all the funny monster movies. I guess the Jaws um, animatronic would be fun, too. It would be neat to have. Although the thing was fucking cursed. Yeah. Good old Bruce. Brucey. We've got to watch the Finding Nemo movies, too. It's been a while since I've seen Finding Nemo. I think it holds up fairly well. That's the one thing that I really do like most about animation. It, Regardless it of when it up. came out, it feels timeless and good. Mm-hmm. Especially Disney. J- Disney just doesn't seem to age. I mean, it ages, but like... It... They age gracefully. Yeah. I'd say the arm from one of the Terminator movies. Like, just a straight robotic arm. Yeah, the, the actual Terminator arm. Yeah. I think that'd be cool. Not bad, not bad. Let's shift. What's something else we can talk about? Pianos. What's your favorite instrument? I don't have one. I mean, as I've, I, I believe I've probably talked about this kind of stuff before, but, like, I listen... I listen to various types of, uh, or my, my musical taste tends to be fairly, like, rock and metal oriented, so, of course, I like instruments like, you know, drums, guitars, basses, and all that. I like it when they throw in something unique in there. Like a violin Yeah, or a get flute. some fucking violin, get some flute for that Celtic feel. Fucking, even throw in a piano and it works well. But, when it comes to an actual favorite instrument the easiest thing to say is just guitar because everything i like very has guitar what the fuck you just say very versatile oh i thought you were about to say very based yeah because i thought you were gonna make a bass guitar joke because like (laughs) because it because it because it makes it makes sense to me saying that because i feel it's one of those things you can't go fucking wrong with it because i would guitars are just everywhere I would say trumpet. Trumpet? Just as, like, just as like a standalone instrument, trumpet's always nice to hear. I like trumpet. Trumpet can have some fun sounds. My only problem with it is that brass, like wind instruments like that, I feel, I feel personally, I find they get grating after a while. They get what? They get grating after a while. What does that mean? They, they hurt your ears. Not as easy listening. Yeah, like, and especially well, because... Well, you can say the same about the guitar, because, like, to truly hear the sound of guitar, you always need the amp with it. Yeah, I suppose. But, I mean, I also like get- acoustic guitars as well. I like acoustic sounds. I guess, yeah, that's a vibe, the, the acoustic guitar. Yeah, and, you know, I re- I love a trumpet that's, um... I love it when a trumpet, you know, you're just going wild, huh? You're yeah. Bringing, you're bringing out the fucking Like the vibes. that 50s shit right yeah. there. Yeah, get some swing going, but... You know, there's also a point where you want to cool that shit down. You go for the blues. Yeah, you go for that blues. But I feel like a, I feel like guitar tends to be just more versatile in getting all those sounds anyway. But like when you like guitar is such a broad term. Yeah, it is. is do you have a specific guitar in mind? Mainly lead guitar rather than bass. So um, like the electric guitar. Yeah, electric guitar, probably. What about you, Eric? I like organ. Organ? Yeah, I like organs. Yeah, I like church organs and shit. I always find those, like, they can be very good in the song, but it's so such a very situational instrument. It is very. And, like, you can throw an organ into some unorthodox place, and it fucking works. Um, I'm a very situational person. I don't work anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I, my 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 choice isn't particularly out there, but 
I guess uh, another distinction is if it were an instrument like I would learn to play or like an, a, a non-conventional instrument, I guess, I would probably say violin. Tyler, I would s- what? Lil Nas X is pregnant right now. Okay. Was it you? Yeah. When? You didn't even, you didn't introduce me? You know uh, the, the song Industry Baby? Yeah. Right before he filmed that. Damn, man. Were you in the background at all? He, he shot his kids to my mouth. I'm, I'm the reason. <laughs> I, I am that song. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! She. What did it taste like? Have you guys ever eaten your cum? No. no. Cool. Eric, have you? <laughs> <laughs> did it burn? No. Why would it burn? I don't know. Because <laughs> Satan was entering. Ah, uh, yeah. Can your cum like, have a pH level? Um, That's acid, acid, acidity, right? Mine yeah. had a PhD because I'm so smart. <laughs> um... I don't think. So. I mean, every every fluid has a pH level. Yeah, but like, can your cum be like somewhat acidic? Can it be acidic? I'm not a fucking scientist. I don't but think so. I, uh, this I'm I'm not a scientist. So this Viewers is at complete home, bullshit. Home, I'm about to say. Go home and jerk off onto a spoon and tell us. <laughs> But don't based, look up actual scientific based information. Based on how, because like the body has so many functions to try yeah. and like keep that shit safe, right? Mm-hmm. It, so it, it it must be sensitive to some degree. So based on that, I would think it's pro- uh, it's probably unlikely for it to actually be any what acidic. All right, but then answer this, Kyle. Whenever I beat my meat and I come. Why does it hurt? <laughs> uh, who have you come with before? No. Were they clean? Did they have boils on their pussy or dick or asshole? No. What color were they? The boils. Not the <laughs> <laughs> what color were they? What uh, is your favorite color? <laughs> what is your favorite color? No, I'm joking, by the way. I, I, I hope so, thank Mine you. Mine burns. Well, like, listen. I got this pair of shorts. I'm scared. Is it the I, one that you jerked off in when you were at the library? The public library where children play with the Thomas shut toy set? Shut up! <laughs> and it was a high school library. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me, la dee da, Mr. <laughs> high Class. <laughs> Looking at the library with the, the, the color hair. from my shorts is starting to fade. <laughs> and it's right where my junk sits. <laughs> Have you ever thought that that's just because you fucking sweat in them? But it's just that very spot. Have you ever thought about swiping your taint with a deodorant stick? Okay. Just that very spot. Okay, Gran. Is this because you just come right there? Do you just blast into your fucking shorts? Okay, no. how, what is your guy's... Okay, what is your guy's ceremony for busting? There's a ceremony? Well, like, what do you do? What do you do with it? Close the door. No, I mean... (laughs) (laughs) Do you, like, just pull the shirt up and then shoot on your stomach and then you're like, ugh, you hold your shirt with your stomach and then walk into the bathroom? (laughs) (laughs) I just imagine Kyle doing that as soon as he... Wipe me! He's just like this and his mom walks out and like, what are you doing? I was like... <laughs> do you like? Do you lock the bathroom? Like, you're the only one that could be in that situation because Eric lives in the basement. Uh, what? What? What's stopping me from doing that? What are the odds that you do that in that bed and go to your upstairs bed bathroom instead of that one? Why wouldn't I? Why would I go to my upstairs bathroom? Anyway, I don't do that because that's animal behavior. I get, I get jizz in my belly button. That's disgusting. But anyways, I see. I don't know. It's called have a Kleenex on. You don't know. 
What do you mean you don't know? Do you just shoot it he into he the darkness and then it out. just disappears? <laughs> he like, like he's like, all right, it's time. He closes the door, he turns off the lights, and he wakes up with like blood in his mouth and cum everywhere. <laughs> You what wake up and you're happened? just you're just in a barn with like a bunch of horses that have had their eyes gouged out. <laughs> in one hand you have an empty bottle of lotion I've and talked the other about this. box have of you? tissues. Yeah. What do you do? I, I beat my meat into the toilet. So you lock oh yes, you have. You say you yeah. lock the door, you take up your your one bathroom that you have in your <laughs> Yeah. What do you have you ever had it where people like walk over and it's like I gotta use the bathroom? You're like one minute. <laughs> no, because I only last like twenty seconds. Yeah. Quick Quick and efficient. So your pisses are quicker. Yeah. What about you, Kyle? What do you do then? Um, I just have tissue on hand, respectable, and I I I keep it clean. And effective. <laughs> do you throw the tissue or do you flush it down the toilet? Uh, I throw it out. So you have cum in your room. Your room reek of cum. Actually, I put it in the bathroom garbage. <laughs> so your bathroom <laughs> reek of cum. Is your bathroom fan at least on? Yeah. I it's blowing the cum that. scent around. It shoots it around. What about lines. you, Eric? Huh? Oh, I eat it. <laughs> I could say I could see Eric being a freak like that. <laughs> I don't want to see that. Thank you. No, I I I blast into a Kleenex and then I flush it down the toilet. After I have a a pee pee first, so that I'm not I I say that I'm not wasting. So that I can say that I'm good for the environment. What does that have to do with being good for the environment? Because I don't I don't, f- don't waste flushes, bro. I don't eat fish, man. I'm stupid. <laughs> How does this pertain to this? It the makes me feel less bad by the time I die. <laughs> well, has you eating fish? I don't even flush it down if I. He shit. doesn't have fish gum. I wait until I blast into Kleenex before I flush the toilet. I'm lying, by the way. <laughs> About what? Everything. <laughs> And not a single truth was uttered in this basement. I you actually can't trust have. Him. He doesn't even live here. How do people use socks? I don't know. I've never tried it. Like, you've seen the video. Like, not worth it, I presume? How many times did you go back to the same sock? Never. You never go back to the same sock. I think other people have a different understanding. Because, like, we, you see the memes, like, they get solid. Yeah, they get crusty. That's not good. How do, I want to know how they go back to the same one after it's that hard. Like, you see people walk out and they throw, like, three socks on the ground and they make a clink sound and, like, they don't, they're rigid and they don't lose shape. I generally they the think ground. they don't go back to the same sock. But, Unless they actually, like, no, listen. Like, it's they take it in me. tears. In tears? Like, you have your sock. Like, when you nut, you make sure you nut up here, then go here, 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 and now you're at the end of the sock. But, like... So you use up the sock. The thing, yeah. The thing is, too, a sock is so thin that, like, it now will shoot... You... No, it will shoot through the sock. There's some thick socks. But not mine. That's just you. Okay, how thick are your socks, then? I think, like... I think my socks would be thick enough to fucking hold that. Okay, prove it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I need those on my feet. I'm not exposing my feet around you freaks. Jeez. I sent Tyler a feet pick the other a foot pick the other day. Oh damn. His feet look like hands, man. <laughs> Cause he's a fucking ape man. What did you expect? Like, elongated it. hands. Okay, it doesn't look different when like they look they look fine when they're like normal like this. But now if I, like, put them at an angle where, like, you're looking at them like this. Kind of different, right? Yeah, it's just fucking of... long-ass toes, bro. He does have... He has fairly long toes and with, like... They're, they're fairly, like, controlled toes. Mm-hmm. I can pick up shit from the ground. Like, I might even be able to pick up this bottle. Also, you're, you're, you're like... They're like thinner, right? I feel like I got like I probably got like fat feet. Right? Yeah, you, 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 okay. I can't pick up the bottle because it's too heavy. But this knife, 
Yeah, he has skinny feet. Yeah. Makes him, makes him look like the alien he is. Easy. Damn. He is now riding. I would be beast from fucking... Uh, X-Men. X-Men. <laughs> See, I even opened it. Wow. Which X-Men would you want to be? Beast. Like, seriously? I... Yeah, sure. Wolverine. Going for the little classic Wolverine? Because, mm. like, his isn't, like, a disturbance. He's not a freak. I guess, yeah. Like, Rogue, I'm... if she touches you, you either die or if she steals your power. Yeah, you Iceman. You got Fireboy. Fireboy. Uh, Storm. <laughs> Storm. I would go. I would go with Storm. Yeah, I Storm, was thinking Storm too. Like Storm can like be normal, but like you know, bright summer day, you know, like, fuck that shit, bro. I, I'd, I'd fucking turn a bright sunny day into a hellish thunderstorm. That'd be awesome. I would turn thunderstorms into existence just to watch them. I love thunderstorms. Thunderstorms, thunderstorms are, are cool. Nice. They're cyclops. His 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 life is just pain. I don't yeah. like. His story. <laughs> his eyes just... His eyes are just a... Well, I've talked about it before. I don't think... I don't... I think that's a different Cyclops. Whatever. Even the existence of the other ones doesn't matter. He, Cause that, his that, eyes are a portal to another dimension. That that's is like just the same thing realm. as with Hulk. There's a thing that said like the gamma radiation itself is from a god that's called the one below all. He's the he's from the Hulk dimension. Okay, based on our personalities, who do you think it, we would all be? You'd be Wolverine because you're fucking feral. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Can't you see this man? Look, he's already got kind of sideburns. No. That's not by choice. It doesn't grow here. <laughs> <laughs> but like, just shave the bit off your chin and just like growl at people and leap at people. And go. <laughs> Now pop some claws out and you're Wolverine. At that point, you should be Beast Man. Beast. Um, but he's not blue. I'm not blue, Tyler. <laughs> you see. I'm not blue. Oh. Uh, never mind. I'm not going to say that. Looks like a crackhead mutant. <laughs> or a crackhead You know mutant. what? He could be Charles Xavier. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I'm not smart enough or controlled enough. Damn. <laughs> Angry Xavier. I'm like... Xavier's failed child. You would be Captain America when he was hooked on heroin. Captain America was hooked on heroin? There was he's, this... not, he's not an X-Man. Did we specify X-Men? I, thought I mean, just, we were kind of... you said hero. We were on the topic of X-Men. Okay, so. let's open it up to heroes and villains. Who would we be? I still think... Crackdose... Captain America? Crack the, cap, cracked in America. Cracked in America. Because, like, the, the story behind that is, like, he was cracking down on a drug-making uh, place, whatever. A crack house. I don't do crack, though. I'm just... It's just your this, personality. I'm just this crazy. Exactly. It's just your personality, man. But, yeah. Uh, I've never done crack before. Like, he s- inhaled the fumes, and, like, due to his, like, super soldier serum, it enhanced the effect of the heroin times ten. And for like a solid month. I don't think month. that's how it works. It's comics. I don't care. <laughs> I don't think that's how crack works. But um, yeah, you got, you got addicted to crack. Damn man. Um, now that I bring like all superheroes and villains, <sighs> Tyler, I get the weird, distinct feeling that you'd be Thing from Fantastic Four. I wouldn't be sad about that. Dude, like, he's pretty fucking cool. Like, yeah. Tyler, just this big rock man, is like, it's clobbering time! <laughs> then the tower beat people up. Or a killer croc. I'd be the shark from Suicide Squad. It's fucking street shark. King shark. King, oh, shark. King shark? I think so. I gotta watch that movie. I've heard that. I actually... I would recommend it. It was actually pretty funny. King shark is my favorite character. Was it... Were you there with uh, me and me and some of the other guys when we watched Suicide Squad? Like the first one? I don't think so. I watched that one in theaters, and we were ripping it apart the whole time. 
I think and, the only movie I've ever seen in theaters with you guys was uh, Joker. Yeah, Joker. The Joker. I, I wasn't even there. Yeah. Because you guys went that weekend. Yeah. Or the weekend before me. And then I took you. Yeah. And then we had Peschetti. We had Asian. <laughs> yeah, we had Asian. It was food. noodles. So we, <laughs> we gotta watch some more movies in a movie theater at some point. <laughs> That's when I had yeah. the fucking whole meme about hitting women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kyle, you don't like popcorn. Yeah. What do you eat when you go to a movie theater? Nachos. Actually, um, hot dogs. Usually what I have is I get like a bag of candy. Usually I like to get myself some Skittles or some Plus Beach. Um, last time when I went with Tyler, we got ourselves some nice poutines with some pulled pork and shit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And it was pretty good, but the one grand falling of that is that it's really hard to see how, what you're fucking eating. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's why I like popcorn so much, yeah, because it, I can just be like a fucking gross caveman and just reach like, my hand in the bag. When yeah. we went, I was like, man, I want to treat my friend. We got poutine. Yeah. <laughs> we got ourselves some. some I food I food never food. go to a movie theater and get normal food. I always get like a hot dog. I get the nachos. Yeah, well, I mean, me being someone who doesn't like the typical movie theater uh, confections, uh, you know, that, that's my kind of thing. So, if I could, I'd bring Chinese food in, man. <laughs> I mean, actually, that's another big trend that's going on now. It's like. Stop bringing food into the movie theater. It makes you look poor, and it's like, mm, I'm not doing it to look rich. I'm doing it because I want to eat this food there was while a, I watch the goddamn fucking not, movie. I like to have a snack while I'm eat, while I'm watching a fucking movie. Mm-hmm. If I'm living, if I'm if I'm sitting in the reclining chairs that a movie theater got, watch a big fucking screen. I want to chill the fuck out. You I'm know how I chill like, the fuck Chinese out? Food. Some fucking food, man. And like. One of the theaters that I used to go to the most, they had their their theater was right beside a dollar store. And it's like, oh, how could I not? Yeah. How could I not? That, that's, Load her up. <laughs> that's the typical deal. Like, if, if the movie theaters buy, like, a, a Dollar Tree or something like that. Not only is it convenient, you, you just make it so easy You always do. load up on everything. You're just begging. Like, and, like... Wow. Yeah, I, get, I, get I still get popcorn, but I come in with something extra. I'm not going to buy fuzzy peaches if I can buy them for exactly. $2 less. Yeah, that's all. Not even, point. like $5 less. Yeah. It's Thanks. like, oh, they're still because they're from the dollar. I don't give a fuck. You Bro, think I care? In I like the, junk food. I like them a little bit better. So how do you guys like... With Maynard stuff, do you like it a little more stale, or do you like it like fresh, fresh, chewy? I like gummy? it fresh where it's more chewy. I like it a little bit more stale, not I, like stale, stale, but like a little bit of like you know you have an initial crunch to it before you get to the ju- the juicy the, stuff. I will what? say, what the staleness of what? Like all Maynard stuff, like fuzzy peaches yeah, like or your, your gummy, your, your sour gummies and stuff. Yeah. I like it. I don't like fresh. it just chewy, chewy. But I also like it like when you bite into it and it has like a little bit of a, a give to it. Yeah. That's what I like. When when I like it like that if it's like sour keys. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like those in particular I think work well when they're a little more solid. But or like if we're talking peaches. if we're talking like fuzzy peach or fucking something else like that, I like it chewy. Like it fresh. Hmm. It usually isn't, but that makes it a pleasant surprise when it is. Man, I should try to sneak in some Chinese food into a movie theater. Who's going to stop me? I mean, honestly, like, I rarely go out to those kind of things, so I just find that, like, an opportunity, like, let's see if there's anything wha- anything interesting on the menu and just try it, because I'm, I'm never fucking coming I here. I fucking so. love Deidre hot dogs, man. Especially, like, when they have, like, a nice condiment selection. Because all y'all go, your ketchup, your mustard, your relish, your honestly, onions, and I'm good. my biggest concern with things like that is that I... How long it's been there? <laughs> no! That I feel like I'm going to be just this pig in the darkness and like the lights are going to turn on and I'm going to see like I'm covered in fucking mustard and ketchup and onion and I'm like, what the fuck? You know fuck? what, Kyle? Eating is a different experience if you can't see what you're care. eating. I don't care. It really is. Yeah. That's, you know, that's Kyle, why I, I think, respect the hustle. <laughs> I respect it. Yeah, that's why I think that popcorn is just so convenient. Popcorn is the ultimate movie food, regardless of... Because, like, like, even if it does fall I know you don't like popcorn, but, 
but I think I mean, from I your standpoint, standpoint it is very convenient because it's not like, like oh it's a mess so you just stand up you fluff off your shirt and it all just here's goes the away. Thing about Eric though, you know what kind of popcorn Eric gets? Plain. Lightly salted. No, but I don't you get know what lightly kind of salted. Popcorn we would get. I don't get lightly salted. I get covered in butter. I'm not a fucking animal. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> we would get, like, we would have to buy those packets of, like, dill pickle, salt vinegar, or ketchup. Those leave the mess. <laughs> <laughs> those do leave the mess. Because, like, they'll all fall on you, you fucking light turn on, you look down, just powder everywhere. I don't, I don't really like dill pickle or salt and vinegar, though. I remember they used to have one where it was, like, um, it was the uh, cinnamon sugar one. I used to get that one all the time. I've never seen that one. It was I love godly. The one. It was so good. Those ones did leave a mess. It wasn't like a visible mess, but you were sticky. It yeah. was like you got covered in fucking pop. Yeah, especially if you got like butter on top of it. Butter. In the Had to get butter on top powder. of it, otherwise it wouldn't stick or yeah. taste good. Mm. So it was nice to like you know like with little kernels they have like the little divots and some sometimes they don't. Yeah. And you know, what do you guys do when you have a full kernel in your mouth? Do you take it out and I you know. throw it on the ground, or do you spit it back into the bag? I look at the person in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I I try to chew it. If I can't chew it, I just. Oh my god! I remember when I was in public school, and there was this one, there was this is one kind of like special special ed kid, and we went to see the uh, the Hunger Games, and um, on our way to finding our seats. Me and my friend, we accidentally, like, he just left his his popcorn in the middle of the row when he was going to the bathroom. So he went to the bathroom, he left his popcorn in the middle of the aisle, and we were trying to find our seats. Did you just kick it the fuck over? I didn't, but my friend did, and I kind of trampled through it after, like, what the fuck just happened? And then we looked back, and like, oh shit, so we kind of like scoop a little, a little <laughs> bit of it back... We scoop a little bit of it back in, but, like, not the ones that's, like, not the one that was on the ground. Like, just whatever was in the bag, so we kind of, like, prop it back up. And, like, the teacher was there, and they saw it, and it's like, yeah, you just kind of left it in there, and it's like, it's not your fault. And we're like, okay, okay, we're... In the clear. Yeah, tell him we're sorry, but don't tell him it was us. And <laughs> If he finds out, say we're sorry, but... And then no. we we find our seats, the movie starts, he comes running back in sits down, he looks at the popcorn on the ground, and he's like, and he throws the popcorn bag at the screen. <laughs> and we just see the fucking popcorn just lit by the, like, the the lights projector. of the movie and the projector and everything, and we're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Man, did we ever get to go to movie theaters? Not really. No. Like... I th- I think I might have at one point, but I think that was more of a special event because I was in some like extra thing. The only field I trip know. I actually like genuinely remember is like grade five or six when we went to East Park. We went to East Park a lot. Yeah, because it was like the only place. Yeah, it was the only us place kids could go. My yeah, school yeah, never went to East still Park. Still me money. <laughs> I remember I bought some people fucking ice cream sandwiches and. And they'd be like, oh yeah, I'll pay you back, I'll pay you back. So you have to fucking pay me back, fucking bitch. I wish workplaces did field trips. <laughs> Just take the entire <laughs> they, land. They yeah, kind of do, but like, it's always usually themed around the workplace. Or it's like always a, business related, or like and it's boring and dumb and stupid. <laughs> like, oh, we're all going to Hawaii. but you know I would what? love to go to Hawaii. You know where my places take me? The food court and back. I, I still like that. I don't fair. like that because I do it every day. <laughs> <laughs> it fucking sucks. You know what they serve? Sandwiches. Sandwich. You know what I buy? Nothing. I bring my own food. Okay. Now, my lava lamp is popping off right now, and you have to admit that. It's not moving. You looked at the worst, most oper- <laughs> inopportune time. I am going to have just a live feed. A <laughs> live of- stream of the lava lamp. Yes. MD cast live stream of the lava lamp. You just see in the comments. It's not moving. It's not moving, man. It's not moving. I'll MD hit every cast lava lamp. You know what? I don't even know. I'm just so perplexed about the lava lamp. <laughs> what time are we at? 
Blah, God, I don't fucking know. I can't read. I it's, can't see. It's been hour like, 30, almost 40. Hour 30. We can keep going for a little bit. What's your favorite? You have a blanket that you liked as a kid. Describe it to me. Spider-Ming. Spider-Ming. I, I, I still have it. And I, I always, re- I don't know why I fucking remember this. I remember getting the blanket because I was a kid and it was my birthday, I think. Yeah, it has to have been my birthday because it was. We- I felt like weirdly people were looking at me. Um, I remember it was, I think, my aunt. And she gets me this blanket and it's like folded up and it's like big and fuzzy. I'm like, wow. And I, for some reason, I thought it was a lion on it as I was unfolding. I'm like, is that a lion? It's like, no. Spider-Man. And I folded more and it's spider man I'm mm. like, wow, spider man It's this big, heavy, fluffy blanket. Can you and say it like that on purpose? What? spider man Yeah, spider man I thought, like, you're actually, like, talking about, like, some Spider-Man I don't know of at home. No. <laughs> I, it's like a this Asian is, Spider-Man. <laughs> this is one of the ways that my that my dialect has been forever fucked up by people I know, namely that guy over there. Um, <laughs> I, I picked up saying Mang Get from fun. him. Mang. So whenever I'm saying like Have man, you guys picked up bro yet? I've been picked saying bro a lot. You know why I haven't said that? Why? I fucking hate it. Bro? Bro. Yeah. V-R-O. I, I see you type it, but I... I, I thought it was just a typo. No. Just no. Eric being a fucking idiot. <laughs> well, I'm not I'm not gonna pick up that one, but I did I pick up hate Mang. that word. Next Mang. you're gonna start fucking saying Ion. What? Or Waymint. Waymint. Ion. No, it's not Waymint, it's Wayman. No. Wayman man. No. It to type it out in uh man, in no, hood language, I'll say. Fuck that. Waymint no, Wayman. is W E Y. M E N T. It's actually Wayne. Fuck, uh, Eric. I know what it is. I'm trying to explain <laughs> to Kyle, but it it means wait a minute. What if it was wuss? And oh. Ion somehow they fucking they fucking devolved the word Ion into I don't. What if it was wussy? <laughs> anyway, big Spider Man blanket. I still like it. It's cool. It's great. I love it. Beautiful. Winter. Winter blanket. How Good. many times have you jizzed on it? None. I Liar. respect the Spider Man. <laughs> I respect the Spider Man. You haven't shot webs on it. You're not a real web slinger. <laughs> I had um, at like an age of eight or like nine or so. I went to Disneyland through Disneyland. through the Boys and Girls Club. And when we got home, when I got home, they gave us a big box, just like full of goodies and stuff. In that box was this one blanket, and that blanket, I love that blanket. I had it with me up until like where I live now. I used to use it as the curtain in my room. I was just like a constant reminder, like you know, that's my, that's my fucking boy right there. That's my fucking blanket. That's the blank. <laughs> then it got ripped up. <laughs> oh, fucking squirrels! It wasn't even my blanket, but it was my brother's blanket that I kind of stole from when he was a kid. Hell yeah! Where it came in a stuffed animal, where like. He had an Is alligator. Is it like those like half and half ones? No. It was an alligator that had the blanket stuffed in it, and it was so soft. It was like this one, but softer. And I love that blanket so much that I stole it, and he never complained. My parents never complained, so I just took it. <laughs> Where is it now? I don't know. <laughs> Fucking... Did you splooge on it? No, there. Never. Never spooked. Uh, I have a I have a comforter that uh, that I remember my my mom had given to me, and she was like, "Yeah, this is actually an old comforter that I used to use in college." I'm like, I'm like, wow, it's got was history. Like, Piss stains on it. No, it was just an old comforter. Shit stains on it. Still use it. It's comfy. Mm-hmm. You ever shit? You still got that small ass bed? You ever shit I mean, the bed? I, I have, like, uh, my bed is a, rather, it's not like, because Eric's bed, like, as an example, is like a queen size. Yeah. Or it's like a big double bed. Mine, mine is, yes, a, because mine's I'm, a single twin. I am yeah. actually hashtag queen boss. Girl you know what boss, I got? Queen. Herpes. Bed. Herpes? That yeah. requires I get laid. You're the only one of us who has. Yeah. 
Eric came close once. Yeah, I fucked my mattress. Yeah, man. We've all been there. That's what the meaning of the mask is. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact is, I just jizzed all over my mattress. <laughs> but, like, there was actually a time where I could have gotten, like, a, a bigger fucking bed, but, like, my room's small. Yeah, it is. I, I need small. I need the space to fit all my hordes of bullshit. <laughs> Why didn't you get, like, your brother's room? I am in my brother's room. <laughs> What, was that room smaller than the last one? Like... No, it's it it's a little bigger, but keep in mind it's all, all also a portion of it is taken up by a large fucking desk, oh, that's large true. like L shaped desk, and it's L. great because uh, it's his desk and he paid for it. Um, but it, he couldn't remove it from the room, <laughs> so I, he just left it. How did it get in there to begin with? He assembled it in there. Oh. This desk. You know this one we record on? Yeah. Five bucks. <laughs> did, did this... it, was it five bucks because it's missing a fucking a fucking door or something? No, that's not. That's a faux door. The, I know. the real doors are on the other side. I should switch it around someday, but my computer's on there. Yeah. But five bucks, and this is my favorite desk. This is my favorite desk I have ever owned. How did you only get it for five bucks? Value Village. I am not bougie. No way they sell, they sold this for five bucks. Five bucks. They just got it. They didn't even do the appraisal for it. It's like, yeah, if you want it, you can just fucking have it. Five bucks. Damn. Yeah. You got this thing. Just for- came Jeez. in the door. <laughs> yeah. It was the most lucrative business opportunity I have ever come across and I don't think I will ever find a better one because this desk I love it it's like it's genuinely like solid wood as well so mm-hmm. if they actually like appraise it and everything it'd probably be sounded for like one or two hundred dollars solid oh, yeah. wood as a table I like it the only problem is that uh it's that I low. wouldn't use it as a, a desk yeah it's too low for my use mm-hmm. but granted he like sits on the food time while he's on the computer so that's low as well yeah true I don't play much video games on my computer either. If I did, I would have to change it. But, yeah, it suits uh, my needs. That's all you can ask for. And I can't draw leaning back either. I have to be in the game repose. What, well, like hunched over? Yes, hunched over. Yeah, I've seen you draw. You're like, you're like hunched over. It's like in between your fucking gut and your fucking pelvis you're going yeah same the only difference is that I have mine like on the desk in front of me I would like to have that but at the same time I feel like it would be too different of a shift for me to fully understand and I'll go back to my horrible ways it depends it, it's one of those things it's one of those things where uh, when you start doing it you, if you if you actually <sighs> think it'll be better for you or you want to do it, then you just have to stick with it until you start doing it. I feel like it would cause me to drool on my drawing pad. <laughs> yeah, I've been there. <laughs> and your feral, normal drawing state doesn't do that? Yeah, because my head hangs over my keyboard instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's so I sticky. swear the worst thing I could do is put a mirror beside me while I'm drawing, and then I look over and I like, just see <laughs> just how the, the just my horrid shape. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like if I if I had a mirror in my room, I feel like I would just. I thought you still did. It. No. Well, that's that's the. Now. <laughs> that's the one thing. One of the view, one of the YouTubers I watch has a mirror in their room, and they've commented multiple times. It's like it's the worst thing I ever did. Or like they'll install a camera in their room. If you had a camera in your room, just in the corner watching you, you would hate yourself. No matter who you are. Because, like, you would see all the things you don't normally realize that you do. The problem I'd have, though, is that, like, I would just be sitting there at night doing whatever, and I'd catch movement. And I catch enough movement out of the corner of my eyes when I'm, when there's nothing. Now imagine that I'm catching my own movements in a mirror. I'd be like, what the fuck? And look, and I'd see this ugly asshole staring back at me. <laughs> Wait, that's possible. <laughs> Could you imagine if your entire... All right, picture this. How well adjusted do you think you would be as a human being if your all of the walls in your house were just mirrors? How crazy do you think you would be? I would be very crazy. I'd be insane. Yeah, you'd ha- you you would I go insane. I feel I would like not that sleep. could fuck up 
so many people. Because, like, you just look Let's do that as a test next. Instead of, like, padded cells and, like, foam walls no, you and will, everything. You will just genuine, make the mirrors. You no, know, you will genuinely go insane. Because, like, you'll look up at the ceiling. You'll see you, but, like, an infinity of you. But then you'll start to think, like, one of those is moving. I'm pretty sure it's fucking moving. I'm not moving. It's moving. How long you would, do you think it would take the average person to just take a hammer to all the walls and It ceilings? would take me about a couple days. And then you know what would be the worst thing? They wouldn't fully shatter. They would just crack. Just create more mirrors. Yeah, just create more mirrors. And they would be warped. Terrible. Truly hellish. There. It would be like the revelation in Uzumaki where like the spiral is in the pe- the person's ear. That one little organ they have that's for, um... The actual eardrum? Yeah. They look at that and it's like... <gasps> I thought you were gonna say it was gonna be like the ending of Uzumaki. Where he just turns into the spiral? No, where they go into, like, where where everything spirals down into the underground. And when they go down there, it's just a land of insanity and spirals. Yeah. Where, like, it, like, the cave walls are spirals. There's a giant spiral monolith. The floor is made of spiral bodies. This just this just reminds me of this fucking one disgusting thing I saw on TikTok where it is, like, one of those, like, horribly disgusting mangas. And it's about a kid who never washed his face or anything, so he started having a lot of pimples. And he was like, I'm never gonna pop these pimples. These pimples are my friends. And obviously Which he'd make, one was that from? He'd obviously get made fun of all the time for it, like, from uh, his friends or people at school. His, even his own parents and sister were like, bro, you're fucking disgusting. Pop your pimples. He'd be like, no, I don't want to. Then one night, at, like, dinner or something, his sister just went off on him. Like, oh, you're so fucking ugly. No one fucking loves you type of shit. And you know what happened next? You know what a fucking disgusting thing he did? Popped the pimples at her? When, he, when she went to sleep, he hovered over her. That was a uh, Junji Ito comic. Can't remember which Woke one. Woke her though. up and just went... Yes, I know that scene. And just popped them all on her. And she's just screaming and crying and her parents come in. And the parents come in and like, what the fuck? What the fuck are you doing, you fucking disgusting fucking vile kid you know what the best part is his father killed him (laughs) and you know what else he owns a restaurant you know what else he cut up his own son and fed it to people what the fuck cool i mean that is junji ito as fuck but one now that we're on junji ito stories one that i've been thinking about for the past little bit was um uh one of the stories in tomi where um it was the like kind of uglier brother of a uh, like three brothers where they kill you know how Tomi goes like yeah. she causes people to kill her uh, and then do you know about Tomi? Not really. Basically, it's a woman and men fall in love with her and then they are overtaken with a murderous intent to kill her. Uh... But she's like some she's like a secret hell beast, so it never works. Yeah. And uh, one of them was, I think they killed they killed her, and then out of the five fingers on one of her hands, they all kind of spread to, like, they grew, the fingers grew up to be different variations of her, and then the pinky was, like, the, um, it was the least developed, it was, like, the runt of the litter. Mm-hmm. And pinky was growing up where she was kind of, like, malformed and, like, different looking, and the brother that was, like... Her brother, like, the guy's brother killed her and then said, go and deal with it. Take the, um, take the body and, like, take it somewhere else. He got stabbed in the process and was, like, losing blood. And then all the ones were developing in a cave that he was just hiding out in. And he, uh, he kind of got attached to the, uh, the pinky because it was like him. It was a, what'd you do? I felt the fucking vibration. The pinky was akin to him because he was like the ugly brother of the group. No one really accepted him. I remember this one. Yeah. Because he was he was the ugly and like not liked one, and so was this one. And, and he they... didn't like Tommy from the beginning because 
like it came from a place of like I don't really have a chance with her why would I even try and then all the other ones were bullying him and uh, or all the other ones were bullying Pinky and then he was like hey leave her alone and like he just kind of like protected that one while he was like on the verge of dying and everything and as each of the as each of them grew up and they became adults they basically just started leaving because they don't need to live in the cave with him anymore um but pinky stuck around and he he's sitting there like pinky you are the only one you are the only one who uh who who appreciates me who lives life like me and he kind of falls for her and then she's just like haha Becomes beautiful, grows up, and says, you're ugly, and leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Does he kill her, at least? No, he no, dies. No, he fucking dies. He dies oh. in a cave, alone and ugly. Nobody ever actually beats her. Yeah. Nobody wins. The fucking last, the last story Wouldn't of Wouldn't he technically win? No. He dies. She, she grows, she becomes ugly. It was all just a farce to, like, she relate to him. But, like, the whole point of it is, like, the guy tries to kill her. Yeah. But he never had that attempt to begin with. Yeah. That's While just how he, it spreads. He raised these fingers of hers. Yeah. And then they go out to the world and do the they same to thing the to other people. They continue doing tummy things. But he technically wins. No. No? How? He died alone and uh Okay, and no. Insulted. How does he win, though, Tyler? Because he didn't fall to temptation. But he did, because she tricked him. Because the thing uh, is... Oh, I think yeah. I get it now. Because, he... like, the girl that was the ugly duckling was like, oh, yeah. It was just doing you. it to relate he... to him. To, yeah. like, open him up and then, like... And then when he finally fell for her, she's she just... She's like, ha, yeah, ugly asshole, get Fucking out of here. nerd. But, um... The kind f- of girls that I follow. Anyway. The final fucking story of Tommy, it was so fucking was such a kick in the balls because throughout the whole thing like this the series sees her her get like fucked up hacked up but then she always like comes out on top because she's a fucking monster and people usually get like either killed or wind up depressed um one person basically the last few stories were connected a guy becomes obsessed with with her and start and uh basically tries to create um clones of her to basically tries to inject bits of her into infant children so they grow up into her so he can fucking get his revenge on her meanwhile he injects one girl's little sister with it and the little sister grows up into tomie tormenting her sister um and she eventually she and this dude eventually meet and the, it's all made clear. It's like, yeah, your little sister has become Tomie, and I, uh, I want to fucking, I want to, I want to destroy her. I want to break her. I want to make her feel the pain that she brings to other people. And what they do is they encase her in a block of cement, and they just encase they encase her in this cement cube, and they keep her in a room. And then it, it time skips to like yeah it time skips ahead decades ahead like seventy years they are both old and decrepit and at times they're thinking like you know they're and of course Tommy it didn't want to be in the fucking block she was like no don't put me in the cement um, and occasionally they sit there's like I one is is Tommy even alive in there and the dude would say aha she is and he, he puts his ear to it and says. You can hear her crying inside. You can hear the sounds of her howls and anguish. And and then, like, 70 years later, they're like, now we will break it open and view her broken form, rotting and disgusting. Because cause the whole thing is, like, she's beautiful, and they basically want to see her beauty just gone. Yeah. So he cracks open the stone and, and opens it up, and he sees, like, this decrepit form. He starts laughing. He's like, ha, ha, look at you! Ugly and broken, I have won! And meanwhile, the woman, who is also, like, an, the, the sister, who is also an old woman now, looks on and sees the block is completely empty. All that's left is a crack in the floor, and you can hear wind howling through it. And the man is just insane and thinks he's won. Yeah. It's... 
That's, that's, that's How do you th- think you'd fare against something like that? I'd die. Because... I feel like it would be fine for a while because if I see a tr- an attractive woman, I look away. With Tomie specifically, I would not be the target because I'm not attractive. <laughs> like, the point to... The thing we would about, all be the pinky story. Yeah. Pretty much. The thing about Tomie specifically is that it's a story about vanity. Like, a lot of the time it's people thinking they have a shot with a woman only to get demoralized and broken. Fuck. Or... Fuck. People being fucked up. Oh, um, so with with Tommy specifically, I feel like aside from the supernatural element of people just forcibly get attracted to her, I think I'd do pretty well because she wouldn't give a shit about me. <laughs> but um, you know what's something like I've been really thinking about lately that I've seen a lot on like like TikTok and stuff. What furry like suits? The, what? Fursuits? No. Okay. The like the the five or seven layers to uh, the one bitch from Forty K, the lust demon guy, or whatever. Slanesh. Slanesh, yeah. Like the layers you have to go through just to go see her. Like, do you think you guys could survive it? I mean, I wouldn't want to. Or which layer do you think sl- you would die at? I don't want to go see Slanesh. I don't know enough about the layers, but I probably wouldn't make it very far past most of them. Because, like, each one's based off, like, the seven deadly sins. I feel like I probably wouldn't make it. Like, I'm not that fucked up. I'm not that down bad. (laughs) Man, I'd make it. (laughs) He'd make it. I wouldn't want to go see Slanish. I feel like she's, like, the best one to see at all of them, though. But that's the thing, though. I wouldn't want to see a chaos demon. I would. I wouldn't be particularly interested just because I know that they are not good to be around. I but mean, you're you're all going, about that chaos gang, aren't you? I am about that chaos gang simply because I believe they're interesting, but I don't think that they are the best values to follow because chaos is chaos. Ultimately, they will burn themselves out. People do chaos because ultimately, a lot of the time, it is the easiest thing to do. It is the easiest thing to fall for. Just like in real life, it's a lot easier to not care. It's a lot easier to be not great to people. I just think it'd be so badass to go through all the layers of her, like, realm or whatever. So you also want to do it for the same reason, but different reason. You want to do it because it isn't easy. Yeah. Because I, I, how cool would it be, me, not even like a dreadnought or anything, just me as a normal human in the world of 40k going through each layer just to stand up to her and be like, ha, you have a dick and leave. <laughs> <laughs> just leave. Ha. Tyler, darling, you made it through my tests. Now I wish to fuck you with my barbed cock. Ha. Yay. If you wanted to see my <laughs> pussy, darling, all you had to do was ask. <laughs> like, but like, just imagine the sheer willpower something like that would take, and like, you it go would back, take more than I would have to offer. Like, you go back to like the Imperium, you, you, Imperium. You go back to Terra and explain. They wouldn't your let story. you go back to the, the Imperium. They'd kill you on site. <laughs> they would kill you. That's fair. Yeah, but I mean, I guess, I guess, in in that sentiment, if I were in like fuck shit world where everything's terrible, I suppose. It, I, I suppose it would be like, you know what, if I'm going to die horribly one way or another, I might as well go out just trying to be as big a badass as I can. Like, it's like, I'll challenge these to card games, I'll fucking, I'll, I'll go to fist fight corn, not because I think I'll win, but because I'm gonna go out, so I'm gonna fucking go out! Yeah. I just think it'd be so cool. Because, like... It's also another thing, like, what if you impress that Chaos God? It'll make you a demon. I don't want to impress it. I don't want to become a slave. You already are a slave if you're in the 40k universe. Yeah. Not unless I kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> like, the one human who withstood the war to go through all the layers of Celeste's shit just to be like, ha, and walk away. I did it. Well, think about how long... Space Marines fall to Slanesh. Do you have the mental fortitude of a Space Marine? 
Quick answer. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Especially just being a normal human. You're not some enhanced human mm. like a space marine. And think about it this way, too. Space marines are infertile. They can't really have lewd thoughts. You're going to the lewd dimension. I mean, even in, like, uh, even in the Fulgrim book. How um, far are you, by the way? Um, still, like, halfway through. Okay. Um, there's, uh, cause in the Fulgrim book, they basically enter, like, this temple dedicated to Sunesh, and the Space Marines get kind of fucked up by it. They're kind of, they kind of, like, influences their mood. There are actually normal humans that went into that temple, thus getting exposed to Slanesh's influence, and they just instantly are losing it. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> I hope the mic picked that up. I doubt it did. But, like, it, it explains, like... Like, it's actually really fucked up, because there, there were two people that it showed specifically. One was a singer, and she's literally sitting in a library trying to like listening to the music she heard inside the and like the ambient sound she heard inside the temple she's just writing stuff out one second she's like haha haha yes and the next thing she's like fuck she just crumples it up and throws it away and resets the tape and then like the other person was a painter an artist and she's like i gotta i gotta paint what i saw i gotta paint it start trying to paint it colors aren't right colors aren't right mixing all the paints not right she gets so frustrated she just takes her fucking um, fucking palette knife and just cuts her arm open and as the blood starts mixing with her paint she's like, so ah! The right color at last! And that is just that is what happens when a normal person merely em- enters a temple with the influence of Slanesh. Going through Slanesh's trials is like you, you walk up to the front door and your cock explodes. Mm-hmm. I, just, I feel like it's a good analogy for the creative mindset as well. Just yeah. that entire book. Yeah. It's got that mood. I can't wait until you get to the orchestra. I'm not saying anything else about that. <laughs> because, hooey, it's so good. I just like, if you're just going to live in such a world, you should might as well, like, do something cool. Might as well die trying something wacky. Become a banana clown. Like, the, the gods could be like, man, this human's got some nice fucking balls. <laughs> nice fucking models. That reminds me of uh, what happened in the corn dimension, where there was a... Uh, I can't remember what kind, what specific branch of orc they were, but they were like the commandos. Like well, they, yeah, those are the ones that are eternally fighting corn, right? Yes, exactly. They're the ones that are just like... Infinitely growing. Yeah, Corn found them so interesting that he keeps reviving them, and they keep getting stronger the more and more, like, times they fight. And, like, the first time they did it, the leader of that group, he ripped a corn demon in half. Like, um, a demon prince in half with his bare hands. And the, he keeps reviving them just to see, like, what they'll do. And when orcs are under stress, they get bigger and bigger and more stronger. So they've been fighting corn for so long... That if they were unleashed into the universe, they would be a force to be reckoned with. That's where, um, what's, who's the angry boy? Angron? Angron, yeah. He was the angry Primarch. Yeah, he's the one that's just fighting all the orcs. <laughs> I don't know where Angron is anymore. He's in the angry dimension. Probably. You know, they probably did what they did when during the Horus Heresy, where they just threw him onto a planet to keep him there. And then they come back a few years later and everything on the planet's dead except for him. Yeah, he's Probably. Just, just booing, sitting in his chair. Nothing to kill. Yeah. Speaking of nothing to kill, it's time to kill the podcast. What's a song, brothers? What is a song? Uh, <sighs> Beetlejuice music. Bum, 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 What's bum, a song bum, bum. about bugs? Um... Is there really any songs about bugs? Open your eyes. That's <laughs> just an album cover. <laughs> Fucking, oh god, what's the, what's that one? You got a parking violation and a maggot on your sleeve. Loser. Yeah. That's not about bugs though. It's got that a just bug has them. Yeah, that's <laughs> like almost the same level as Guano Apes <laughs> album cover. These are references of bugs. Yeah. 
How many other? There has to be more bugs, bug songs out there. The Beatles don't count. <laughs> That's a name of a band. John Lennon died. Did they ever answer why they call themselves the Beatles? Because they're fucking Beatles. Yeah, they're fucking Beatles, mate. You yeah, fucking perfect. Just one a dung beetle? Is like one like a... Per- yeah, he's twat. a fucking elephant beetle. A rhino beetle? Because you can't kill the British, no matter how hard you try. Because he's got... He's... the Beatles. He's got a pussy the size of an elephant, you fucking twat. Because yeah. <laughs> they fucking split their backs open and fly. Because you can't fucking kill him. You just can't fucking kill him. <laughs> we need a song... Just we need a song. No, we don't. I need a song about buggies. The ants go marching one by one. Hurrah. Hurrah. <laughs> the ants go marching one, one by one. one. Hurrah. 